here today with Mark Thompson, Managing Director of Talga Resources. Mark, thanks for your time. Thanks, David. Mark, you just announced some great results on making concrete more conductive. Can you tell us more? Yeah, the graphene and graphite that we've mixed into uh, concrete, so we've constructed a concrete product. Um, so we've taken industry standard aggregates and cement, made our own formula with our graphite and graphene, and the end result of that is it conducts uh, temperature really well. Um, so it's now thermally conductive concrete, whereas concrete normally is an insulator, so you can't use it in lots of applications, but with our results that shows that you can get ex excellent performance in conductivity in some applications. What is thermally conductive concrete and what is it used for? Concrete itself is an insulator. It's a very poor conductor of heat or, or electricity, so energy going through it in, in that way. Um, thermally conductive concrete means it can conduct temperature, um, conduct heat really well. So if something's going to get hot, you can make it cooler by encasing it in concrete and it will dissipate the heat away from it. Concrete doesn't normally do that. So to achieve that means that concrete, which is a really big volume um, market, uh, it means you can have products that do all sorts of jobs that it couldn't do before. The current major uh, application for it is underground power cables. High voltage power cables actually generate quite a bit of heat and the hotter the cable that gets, um, the, the harder it is for the power to actually go through the line. So when you've got these green energy projects like wind and solar, especially these large giant projects being built in, in Europe, they struggle to push the power through the lines if they get hot. By, by wrapping the cables in thermally conductive concrete, they get the temperature away, it keeps the cable cooler, and the power capability, and there are other benefits as well, increases. So it's actually cheaper to push power through cables that are wrapped in thermally conductive concrete. And um, the German government's announced that they have uh, over 7,000 kilometres of power cables they want to build in the country, including 1,000 kilometres that has to be put underground um, in the short term. So we just think these are um, fantastic markets for our project, which in Sweden is not far away from the, this European market. What's the commercialisation pathway for a product like this? So our strategy is, is, this is really at the end of the strategy, which is where we've got the test results from a product that we've made, it's our formula, and we then take that out to potential customers to get partnership deals and, and commercialise the product. Um, so this follows a series of uh, tests where we've created, created a product, we've got it tested by other parties, we might have sent samples out to customers, but there's a strategy of steps that we go through, and the last one is by making our own product, we've value added to it, it's now a, a much uh, more, uh, obviously a more potentially valuable product for us and for our customers. And we compare those results to their products that they're already making, and that's how we get a faster path to market. And that's what recently worked with our um, BSF coatings deal we announced recently, and it's the sort of strategy we're rolling out across all, all our other uh, market sectors that we're, we're doing products in. How is it economically feasible when graphene seems so expensive? But concrete, while it's a large market, is such a low-cost product. Yeah, certainly uh, at, at first glance it looks like how could very expensive graphene end up in a product like concrete or, or a road or sort of product. Um, the trick here is that the, the loading, which is the amount of graphene we put into this product, is extremely small. Uh, and it's combined, it works, because we mix it with our raw ore directly from the site in Sweden. So by making a blend of them and the amount of graphene is very small, it means it's not only economically feasible, it's potentially very profitable for us to actually make change the properties of this material. So like a lot of other graphene products we, we work on, it's about um, adding a bit of graphene into some currently existing product in a currently existing market to improve its properties. And a lot of those uh, properties can be changed by extremely small amounts of graphene. In the case of concrete, of course it's economically sensitive. So we have extra, we've, we've already refined the smallest amount of graphene possible, but we've also done it by incorporating the largest amount of raw products we own the supply chain for as well to, to make it work. So in this way for us it's possible. Also you have to bear in mind that specialty concretes can um, uh, be uh, retailed for maybe two to three times as much as normal concrete. So it's a, it's a, it's a more I guess lucrative subsector of the overall $450 billion a year concrete market. You make a point about utilising 100% of the graphite ore. What does this mean and what are the ramifications for Talga's project? Yeah, the beauty of our ore deposit being the highest grade uh, graphite resource in the world is that also it's naturally highly conductive, both in electricity and in temperature as well. So what that means is that we've added this material to combine it with the graphene to make this concrete as conductive as it is thermally. So what it means is that we can take raw materials from our site with very little processing, essentially what would otherwise be called waste products, 
and we can actually, by, by mixing them with the graphene, we can now sell them as a product. So it means that if you look at your ore resource, instead of just extracting the carbon rich parts that you would get paid for, we're talking about using 100% of the ore, all of it now can be mixed into a product that gets sold. So therefore it could have some massive um, economic uplift to the, uh, to the way the project works and frankly change the development footprint, the environmental footprint of the project because all that material is going to be coming off site and being sold rather than needing to be stored at the project. Mark, thanks very much for your time today. Pleasure. Thanks, David.